Good afternoon and welcome to Take Action News. This is Daniel Marins on Take Action News this Saturday, February 23rd, sitting in again for host David Schuster, who is on his honeymoon. Joining me in studio, as always, are the board operator and engineer, the great Rich Webster, the boy genius. How you doing, Rich? Hello, Daniel. I'm doing well. And Pete, Johnny Depp Callahan. Pete was busy on Friday returning a generator from the amazing, amazing live-streamed climate rally, Climate Forward, that he, that he really single-handedly, well, also with Rich, produced on Sunday. Pete, how you doing? I'm wonderful, Daniel. How are you? We call him Pete Johnny Depp Callahan, for those who are listening to us over the radio and not watching us online at TakeActionNews.com, because of his sometimes goatee, sometimes goatee. Um, right now he's clean-shaven, and he's making us look like, I don't know, He's not making us look good. But we've got a great, great hour ahead of us. We're going to be talking about getting into some of the more of the details with bipartisan immigration reform, gun control developments, uh, taxes and the sequester, things like that. And, uh, you know, also, also talking about things going on in the Middle East, talking about the Chuck Hagel hearings and how we're going to be talking with a reporter for the New York Daily News who was inadvertently responsible for the nasty rumor that Chuck Hagel had received money to speak from a group called Friends of Hamas. Friends of Hamas. Interesting stuff. But first, our opening story. $50 million worth in diamonds were stolen from the diamond capital of the world, or rather, near the diamond capital of the world, which is the Antwerp World Diamond Center. They were stolen at, a Brussels, at the Brussels airport. And they apparently, the airport spokesman said that the robbers made a hole in the perimeter fence, drove to the Swiss passenger plane, which was ready to leave. They then got out of the car, flashed their weapons, and took the loot. Okay. They didn't fire a single shot. They drove through the same hole in the fence and just got the heck out of there. Fifty million dollars in diamonds. It sounds like a movie. Pete Callahan. Yes, sir. Are you a little bit underwhelmed by the kind of security that fifty million dollars in diamonds faces in the diamond capital of the world? I'm a little surprised. A little bit surprised here. I also like it's kind of a you know ballsy move to pull this off too. I think in some ways, but it seems like it wasn't as hard as it should have been. Pete, what's your favorite? What's your favorite robbery movie? Ooh. Um, what's the one when Brad Pitt plays the boxer where they steal the diamond? It's a Guy Ritchie movie. Um, Ocean's Eleven? No. It's not Lock, yeah, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels is definitely one of them. But I think it was the one after that one. Might be called something. I don't I'm know. a fan of Ocean's Eleven. I'm also a fan of the original good. Ocean's Eleven where... I can't spoil it, but with the Rat Pack with Sammy Davis Jr. and Frank Sinatra, Peter Lawford... Joey Bishop. <laughs> Pete's a big fan of the Rat Pack, apparently. I've always liked Joey Bishop. <laughs> Snatch. The movie is Snatch that I was thinking of, by the way. That's right. Another movie about uh, diamond theft. Also, like The Italian Job. I thought that was an excellent movie with uh, Donald Sutherland and Edward Norton. Like the modern day Ocean's Eleven. Now, apparently, um, the diamond community. <laughs> if that can be called a community, but obviously it's a major trade across the world in New York City, in Antwerp, Belgium, in the Flemish part of Belgium, and I believe also in Tel Aviv. Those are that's sort of the, the triangle trade of diamonds. One place they're cut, one place they're they're traded on the on the primary market, one place they're sold on the secondary market. Now apparently they're they're pretty concerned about this. Philip Baum, an avi aviation security consultant in, in Britain, said the robbery was worrying, not because the fence was breached, but because the response did not appear to have been immediate. That raised questions as to whether alarms were ringing in the right places. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to breach the fence, but once they're there, you got to nail the robbers. I think there's some pretty ticked off diamond investors in Belgium right now. It's got to be covered though, right? Covered by insurance? Yeah. Well, if I mean, you would not insure fifty million dollars worth of diamonds. If you have are, the are money you, to buy the diamonds, you got to have the money to buy the insurance. Well, in that case, I mean, couldn't this just be a big case of insurance fraud? It could be. Could very well be. 
And also my favorite Diamond Heist movie, which you might actually like, um, is Inside Job, actually, where they stay inside the thing with Denzel Washington. Great, great movie. It's about bl- it's about um, Nazi blood diamonds. It's Denzel Washington and the tall, weird-looking guy who's huh. English. Fascinating. It's, of course, yeah. interesting because there's another movie called Inside Job about one of the greatest heists in history. Exactly. And of course, that heist was done by Wall Street to crash our economy in 2007 and 2008. Great movie I recommended by Charles Ferguson. We're going to keep track of this diamond heist story because who knows what's next? Seems really odd. In just a few moments, we're going to pause as our syndicated stations join us, our listeners in Columbus, Chicago, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and parts of Oklahoma. But of course, we're reminding you, subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash takeactionnewstv.